Okay, off we go. Nothing unusual as yet, so just keep it safe. Let's give give a bit of activity before we go and castle. Oh, it's continuing, so that keeps us busy. And now he's attacking through the center. So we can always just bring the queen back nice and steadily. Could put a check on his king, but there's no point because the bishop is just going to come here. Okay, let's keep it simple. Bring it back. Now the queen's getting activated. Queen's getting activated for potential here or trying to hold my bishop to ransom. So I'm actually castling at this moment. Just going to bring the bishop here, protecting this pawn for potential for the knight coming here and attacking the queen. So I'm going to bring it through. Should have probably castled the opponent, maybe. They're probably going to castle now. No, so they're delaying their castling. For what reason? Let's put a check on the king while we're thinking. Just because the you don't, just because the king hasn't gone and castled doesn't mean you've won anything. So we need to probably get the white square bishop off the back, but his queen's holding my bishop to ransom. Bishop can put a check on his king just to let him know that we're here. So keep bothering it for a minute. So he's gone onto a white square. Now if the bishop comes here, obviously the pawn is just going to drop. Is there anything in the meantime? The queen's not going to get onto a white square fast enough, which is a bit annoying. Or I could bring my queen here to go there. Shall we attempt that one first? And if the rook comes across, we can take the rook and it's a checkmate. And if we get this, it's obviously checkmate as well. So he's, he needs to do a bit of juggling to get a good position, doesn't he? I don't know if he's, it's possible. Unless, of course, he moves the bishop. Yeah, yeah, if he moves the bishop. Oh. Okay, so we'll go for a checkmate there. Okay, that was a pretty smooth thing. But it, again, for me, looking at this type of game, it's looking at what the opponent does and then actually respond, looking, responding to what is actually on the board rather than what reactions I would normally go for you know if it's like you know going really fast or you, you, you're doing your prep and you're going oh well I expect them to go here there and everywhere so I think I'll try and show what I'm talking about in terms of reacting to normal moves okay so now they've brought this pawn out here this isn't really a usual movement this is like a movement saying well Either I don't know what to do or I'm just going to sit and wait for you to do something because none of their minor pieces are out at the minute from their second move. So we bring ours out and we develop our bishop nice and steadily and we're supporting our pawn and at this stage it looks fairly normal. Yep. So now we're attacking through the centre and they attack back and we capture. They capture and we capture so keeping it simple and then they're attacking with the pawn we do like that sort of move you know attacking the uh, queen with the pawns so we bring the queen back so i think something happens somewhere here um i'll give them the queen move yeah because it holds that pawn to ransom so the bishop can't move so we castle bishop comes out so you expect them to go and castle so then we bring our bishop through and this was where the error was made as far as I could see because they should have gone and castled. He still has time to go and castle because uh, we're attacking the queen but now obviously and again they have time to castle but yet they move the bishop again. So looking at what we wanted we potentially were looking at attacking the bishop that type of thing you know and we're really look, looking at this open space here so we might as well just attack the king looking at pressure in the king area the part of the answer process that we were practicing 
and then the king comes to the side so we debated about all sorts of moves bringing the white square bishop out here um, but then looked at what the danger zones was the, the king really doesn't have anywhere to go so at this point here now we did come through thinking we're touching here we didn't at this moment in time think it was a checkmate to say we just want to disturb them but looking further it is kind of a checkmate situation his rook can't come here because it'll just get taken if he moves his bishop out which probably i think may have been one to save a bit of tempo let me just test it out yeah, moving the bishop here so then at least if we do go here he can move his king we can then take he can try and save his king at least his king is getting to safety as far as i can see so that potentially was a move that they probably could have considered and yeah can't see anything else from there but yeah that's the type of thing i would probably expect it to have seen so interesting game unusual always expecting the unusual i'm always preparing myself to play unusually and play from my head all the time not play with prep in mind just basically just playing chess as it should be played which is the feel the natural instinct natural strategy not a series of learned preparation maneuvers trying to outguess the movements all the way up to like 50 moves ahead and stuff like that it takes the soul out of the game you know I, I prefer to actually do it in the game whether i win or i lose or i draw i'd rather get some sort of wins and some draws in there in the testing ones you know i'm trying not to lose and so the more i can do that myself in the game in the actual game doing my own strategical plans and strategies and ideas in my in the game then i feel a whole lot stronger i feel a whole lot better rather than relying on histories of theory and predicted moves and that type of stuff it really does take the soul out of the game and um, so that's me that's where i'm at and i don't think i will change my viewpoints on that i think to keep the whole soul part of the game you have to play as an individual you have to use your own thought and and trying to outguess the moves 20 30 moves okay by by doing prep and um, looking at theory um really just you, you're basically sitting on the shoulders of of older players all the history historical players and you're not actually putting your own slant on the game that's when you'll get beat by somebody who doesn't care about those theory aspects yes they may practice the theory they may do all the prep they might sound you know all the good stuff but when in actual game when you look at the game you can see straight off that the way they're winning is because they're actually putting the soul back into the game and not sucking the life out of it with theory 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 you know which is basically saying i might as well not be playing on this board you may as well get mr sicilian guy in from 18 something or the other um and let him play the game for me you know so that's what i'm trying to say in order for you to be able to bring your own flavor to the game you have to bring your own soul to the game not the history of chess it's not the history of chess in this moment right here right now it's you against your opponent not mr sicilian mr nidorf or anybody like that it's you as an individual 